Le fruit, c'est toute la vie de Sicoli. Du côté de nos vergers, auprès de nos associés coopérateurs qui chaque jour cultivent des fruits de haute qualité dans les monts du Lyonnais, ou du côté produits surgelés pour nos clients pâtissiers, glaciers, restaurateurs, barmen et bien d'autres encore aux quatre coins du globe, nous nous engageons pour la qualité et le respect du fruit, de la terre et de l'humain. Découvrez à chaque épisode nos produits, nos engagements et notre savoir-faire à travers les yeux d'un invité. It's the most romantic time of the year. Valentine's Day is a very important holiday for chocolatiers, confectioners and even pastry chefs as this event is the occasion for many people to treat their beloved one with a sweet gift. And one of the most popular one is of course chocolate. For this episode, I invited Sebastian Petersen pastry chef at TAC restaurant in Stockholm and one of our ambassadors to discuss the winning chocolate and fruit pairings and give us his personal tips on how to create a wow fruit field recipe. Hi Sebastian. Hi. So before starting this new podcast episode, could you please introduce yourself to our listeners of and course. tell us a bit more about how you discovered Sicoli and your history with the brand? Yes, of course. So my name is uh, Sebastian Peterson, and I am a 27 years old pastry chef from Stockholm, Sweden. Uh, I've been in uh, culinary competitions together with the Swedish culinary team for approximately seven years. So I've been most of my career focused on uh, Michelin star restaurants and at the same time uh, being uh, in cooking competitions. And I got in contact with Sicoli, the brand and the product, uh, at, at the beginning of my career. So I've always been working and always been fascinated by Sicoli's product. And two years ago, I've been an ambassador for Sicoli and traveling around the world, doing master classes and spreading inspiration about their beautiful products. And we can say we are really happy about that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> me too. As I stated in the intro, we are recording together this episode for Valentine's Day. Yeah. So I will start with a general question. So from your point of view, what are the top items that customers purchase on these holidays? What flavors, shapes, texture are they looking for? Of course, people are looking for the very cliche things that look like heart, that are very, very fancy and at the same time a little bit silly. But I think that they are both Easter and Valentine's are very appreciated to go with visuals, uh, to have like heart shapes. Anything to do with text and love is just an easy buyer. Um, But going to taste wise, of course, there is a lot of chocolate, but uh, there is also a lot of focus on, in my way, which I always combine is red fruit or citrus fruits with this type of chocolate creations. Mm -hmm. So in terms of color, we would go for pink or red. Yeah, yeah. Everything that has something to do with love colors which is pink red and dark red uh yeah will sell massively well we love a good cliche yeah <laughs> <laughs> and uh, as you said chocolate is a staple for valentine's day so are the red fruits like we yep. can think of chocolate covered strawberries at for yeah. the evenings and so on that's the cliche as you said But uh, so according to you, what are the most popular pairings uh, between fruit and chocolates for Valentine's Day? Or what are your personal favorites? A personal favorite that is always going to be a big seller is, of course, uh, raspberries. Raspberries together with a more creamier type of chocolate. I would go raspberry and maybe ruby chocolate or... Uh, Ruby chocolate is pink, so it's preferable. And also like white chocolate, raspberries. Yeah, I think those two are definitely my favorite. And would you recommend other type of fruits or other type of chocolates for the chefs? Uh, also recommended uh, 
the wild strawberry puree, because I think that the wild strawberry puree has a uh, very special type of taste when it comes to it. And uh, of course, the strawberry puree, as you said, strawberries and together with uh, dipping them in chocolate, you can get that sense of uh, feeling when you do a praline with raspberries and chocolate, but definitely. And do you think that there are do's and don'ts when it comes to fruit and chocolate? Like some chocolates go with fruits and some don't? Yeah, I think so. I mean, no, I would I would say no, but in another type of way, I work with it every day. And I mean, you could exper you could experiment with everything, but I wouldn't experiment with a super acidic chocolate together with even more like acidic citrus fruits. That would just be too much, in my opinion. Um, I would rather round off a citrus fruit with something creamier, something more fat. Okay. So, but I'm probably going to be surprised one day when someone does it and it's super tasty. <laughs> <laughs> What does fruit bring to a chocolate, basically? Like, why do we pair fruit with chocolate? Um, it brings, of course, a lot of color. Since chocolate is eating a lot of our colors when we mix it together with cream and stuff, uh, it brings us a lot of color. It brings us a freshness. If, for example, if you take a raspberry puree, um, to have just a tiny bit of it in a basic ganache, it would bring a lot of life of freshness into it. Uh, not the same type of freshness as a citrus fruit uh, normally does, but kind of a summer feeling freshness for me. Okay, that that's good. In February, yeah. to have a bit of summer feeling. Yeah. <laughs> so we talked about the flavors, the pairings, what you like and I would like to move on maybe to a more technical part and um, how would you successfully integrate a fruit puree to a ganache? Are there some specific rules, specific techniques to follow? Um, of course there are some rules because a uh, ganache recipe is based on calculations of fat percent, sugar percents and uh, etc. Uh, so you need to be careful. You know, if you're just like an artisan pastry chef making a couple of uh, pralines every now and then or in a restaurant and you store them nicely and you make new ones very often, you could definitely experience nice flavors, especially with if you have purees without uh, additional sugar, you get a lot more freshness. But if you're a larger production, you need to really calculate how much of that freshness you're adding into the recipe. You can't just take away the cream and add a puree because you are gonna have a shorter shelf life. So if you're based on working a lot of shelf lifetime, you need to be very accurate with still having a large amount of sugar to preserve uh, the ganache in a well way. So basically what you're saying is that the amount of puree you're adding affects the shelf life of yeah. your ganache. Okay. Yeah, it does. So that and is something that you need to yeah, calculate, do a couple of testers and uh, see how much like active water, as we often speak about active water, is something that creates a shorter shelf life uh, to say it easy. Uh, so you need to do a couple of tests, see how much, push the limits of how much raspberry puree you can add into the recipe. Okay. And you, you talked a lot about ganache and are there other techniques that you can use to have a fruit filled bonbons or are they, or ganache is the main one? I would, when I do like, uh, to say if I would do a bonbon with, um, raspberry flavor or strawberry flavor i would rather do a caramel since there's a lot of sugar a lot of uh, preserving in a caramel or i would do a um, 
a pate fui, pate fui, <laughs> Malaya jam or anything um, with more sugar content together with the puree, and then maybe just have a plain vanilla ganache and make a two-layer uh, bonbon. Okay, so to to ensure the the uh, a good shelf life, you would have a, a more sweetened recipe, yeah, yeah. Uh, then the ganache. Yeah. Okay. I would say so. That's a good tip. <laughs> <laughs> and in some recipes we can find on the internet and or books, we can read that some chefs are adding like liquors or additional ingredients to boost the flavors. Is it always necessary or are there some criteria you should uh, think of when choosing your puree or your fruit? Um, basically what I do when I use, I use a combination of glucose and uh, inverted sugar in 99% of my ganache recipes. Uh, it's both for texture, but it's mainly for, uh, as we spoke about, you need a lot of sugar content in the um, basic ganache recipes to keep a longer shelf life. But if you don't want to have it too sweet, you add trimoline and glucose. So both for texture, for mouthfeel, and also because these are two stronger sugar content without being too sweet. Okay, so by choosing the right sugars, you wouldn't need the, the boost of flavors with other ingredients. No. So, for example, if you have caster sugar, normal white sugar, you need a larger amount of white sugar than you need glucose and trimoline. So that would say that the ganache would be extremely sweet if you only based it on that type of white sugar. But if you compare with white sugar or if you only have glucose trimoline, it would still be a pretty fresh ganache with raspberry notes and still have the same shelf life. Okay. Um, one of the final questions, I, I would bring a more controversial topic. Wait. So you gave the example of the raspberry and one can argue that, especially in Sweden, they are not in season and no. the red fruits are not in season uh, for Valentine's Day. And we know that people try to consume more responsibly, more local produce, more in season. So what would you respond to that? And maybe would you recommend some other type of fruits or ingredients for the Valentine's Day recipes? Um, it's a hot topic to talk about seasonal fruits, um, especially in Sweden and in North countries, we are very our guests are expecting us to work seasonal when they come to a restaurant, so we need to focus on that. Um, but I would say, even though we're from Cichlid's perspective, I'm working with frozen fruit that has been in season when you did the process. So in one term, it is seasonal all the year around. <laughs> but as I said, our customers and our guests are expecting us to work in season. So I would choose a fruit that they might don't think so much about because we don't have so much fruits and so much nice fresh things in uh, in this period in February in Sweden at least. So I would rather choose something that they don't expect ever to be seasonal. For example, we have uh, the crushed lemon. The crushed lemon is one of my favorite purees of all times from Sicily, and I use it very often. And it could be on the menu all the year around in Sweden, and no one would really care if it's not seasonal or not. Or as I often use the ginger um, puree or juice, as you have from Sicily. Since I'm working in a Japanese inspired restaurant, that's very common to use here for us. They prefer it all the way. So having this system of picking out the ones that they don't expect to be ever in season, but we could still get it the year around. It's a short tip. It's it's not a cheating way, but it is a way to 
get the customers to uh, don't even think about the seasonal really. And, and maybe ginger is also a, a, a good product to use for Valentine's Day. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> definitely. Finally, we have a live. Yeah. Uh, planned on February uh, the 14th, so on yeah. Valentine's Day. And I just wanted you to tease a bit the recipes you will present us on that day. The recipes we will do on that day is based on <laughs> exactly what we spoke about today. That we'll use a lot of uh, raspberries. We will definitely go through some bonbons and uh, some uh, decorations in technical terms of uh, chocolate. Uh, so it's going to be bonbons, marmalades, chocolate, and maybe, maybe, maybe some type of pastry as well. Ooh, so now I'm getting excited. Thank you. <laughs> well, thank you very much for all your answers, for your tips. And we will see you on Valentine's Day at yeah. 4 o'clock. Four o'clock, Valentine's Day. Bye. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>